If you've watched my channel before, you'll probably know that I am not too fond of JavaScript. Now, I know what you're gonna say. I know you're gonna complain. Oh, JavaScript's fine to use. Just use TypeScript, blah, 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 blah. I don't care, okay? JavaScript has caused much trauma for me. Much trauma? That's not a thing. But anyway, here's a story about how I learned Go and how I found it. Okay, I gotta download it. How do I download it? What? Oh, my. okay, so we're, how long? We're two minutes and 40 seconds into the video and I'm already having Linux problems. What? How? I don't understand. I'm using sudo. Stop blaming people for not using Linux when they just want to get stuff done on Windows. Go run dot. The theme, the theme makes you a better programmer, trust me. Okay, if you spend maybe like 30 minutes, 30 minutes each week contemplating the theme and the exact color codes, you will become a better programmer very quickly. Flash quote. Nope, it, it just, it, it just, my code was so bad, VS Code has literally just boosted it. Okay. Go mod, why? I keep putting God mod. Why? You know you're a programmer when you manage to make the simplest task the most complicated task of your entire day. Okay, so, um, um I may have made a decision. Yeah, I, sw I switched to Windows. I switched to Windows. I don't care if Microsoft know everything about me, because it works. Does does the person who designed this syntax have dyslexia? I'm sorry to anyone with dyslexia. But then what's even weirder is like, it's this way around here. It's just, it's confusing. So after coming to grips with Golang, I started my first project. Today, we're gonna try and make a CDN in Jin in Golang. This is a little bit embarrassing, but I am actually really struggling to understand the documentation for these modules. I don't know if it's just me or not, but I'm gonna have to go and watch like a YouTube tutorial, which I hate doing. Oh wait, so can we do router dot? Oh my God, <laughs> we got it. Why did that take so long, man? Fix your software Microsoft or your extension go. I don't really know what to blame. It's just easier to blame VS Code rather than myself. So finally, if we do go run dot, fingers crossed, we should have an API endpoint. All right, we got a punk. Brilliant. You know, this public private naming convention stuff is weird, but we got global variables and that's something I like. Guys, this, this file type library is blazingly fast. There's a file header property. It would be nice to know this. Go single-handedly has to be the most useful and most annoying language at the same time. One day I'll find it. One day I'll find it in my drive and I will have no idea how- Oh no, here it is. <laughs> and then I asked Dylan to review it and, uh, well, he, he was, um, he was brutally honest. Hey, British! I upload it and I get it. If you pay attention to this ID here, if I try and upload the same image again, it just gives me the same thing and it doesn't upload the same mm. file again. It does work, but it doesn't work with GIF. I've been doing Go for three days, man. So my good friend Lemon Orange wanted a back end for his project, so I thought that I would try doing this in Go. Now, I do have very limited experience with Go, but I understand the premise of JSON web targeting and everything like that, so I decided to give it a shot. I know I'm being lazy here, but I actually think that ChatGPT could just do this, this for me. <laughs> Easy. The Golang error handling is very annoying because every single thing that returns an error, you have to do if error does not equal nil. To make this cleaner, how can I... Ah, right, that's pointless then. Importing is like my, like, my least favorite part of Go so far is the modules. They're really annoying because I have to manually type in amethyst. All right, let's see now if it even runs. I think it will. Never mind. I mean, it kind of works, I guess. Man, why would Google go be like actually secure? Okay, let's try logging in with my account. Yes. So after getting OAuth working, I decided to move to local authentication using JWT. So the way JSON Web Token works is that you have like a JSON payload. You are able to encrypt that using something like SHA, and then you can send it off to the front end and it'll be stored in the local storage. You can send this like a, what's known as an access token to the back end, and then it will read this access token and decode it. Hey, I need to stop using ChatGPT for everything because it's not a very good habit to have. Um, realistically, I should start reading documentation. <laughs> but like, it's it's very difficult to read documentation when this is all they give you. They don't give you any examples. I mean, like, I suppose you've got examples here, but you need the whole thing. You need to know where to start. Beautiful. Uh, never mind. We didn't get an access token, which isn't ideal. Also, we don't want to send the password. 
I have to go to so many different users because I keep messing it up. There we go. That's more like it. We have a, a login system. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I mean, I hope it, it works fully. I can't believe I have to read my own documentation to remind myself how this works. Let's try signing up a user. So let's go to sign up. Beautiful stuff. But if we remove like one character from the password, then it should. Yeah, it doesn't like it, obviously. Now, what I have noticed is that these are capitalized, which they shouldn't be. Let's put these into the headers and then we'll try authorizing. Uh, then if we make this request to beautiful stuff. I was somewhat successful with creating the back end for this project. So yeah, I, I did end up using ChatGPT for basically everything, which I am guilty about. I know it's not a very good habit to have. Another problem with Go Ahead is that the packages are kind of DIY, very lightweight. Uh, there aren't many big options for something that does everything for you. For example, like Django and Python. Don't use Python. Um, but that, that's my opinion. Now to the things that I do like about Go, and the reason that I'll probably continue using Go, is that it is very easy to learn and use. The learning curve, if you already know programming, is very, very small, so I genuinely would recommend learning Go if you're considering it. The syntax is very similar to C, so if you've used C before, then you'll really like Go because it's easier than C. You've not got all this uh, dynamic array shit. Um, <laughs> but let's let's not let my uh, deep-rooted hate at all these languages and frameworks get in the way because I know everyone's going to complain about it. Uh, but yeah, that's all I've had to say, so if you enjoyed, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.